Hello out there and welcome to this basic tutorial where we will create this type of lamp and yeah it's just to get into Fusion 360 a little bit more and uh, doing a little bit of sketching and using some solid modeling and maybe we also do this light bulb. So let's start. Actually, I don't have any measurements for this lamp. It was just an image that I thought would be cool to build, but I will insert um, a canvas anyway. Anyway, so insert from my computer and it is actually just that I have the image somewhere and. I have a little bit of a reference and maybe if you want to do uh, more or less the same size then calibrate the image and actually from here to somewhere here it might have 15 centimeters okay 150 millimeters so just that I can have a quick look at it if I want to. Actually, I want to build a green lamp with this cool um, twisted handle, but yes, okay. Actually, I will hide it and start with a sketch. So, create sketch on the base plane and I will start here at the origin with here a diameter of 150 because I start with the base plane here and you also saw in the image that there is a little bit of decoration and a position where the handle is mounted and so I just um, add some more sketches here and what I do is I start here with the next circle but just hover over the origin and then I can go up and it follows the midline so that I can position it somewhere you could also do it um, for example if you want to have the position here then now 50 millimeters here to the center then draw a helping line press X on the keyboard and so that you have a starting point or you start anyway anywhere I don't mind so I do I don't know circle of 25 and another one because I will need that so and here I take yeah 15 and what I also do here this little um, smile form I will use an arc here and I will use a three-point arc I also have it here on top and it's also when I start here, hover the origin and I move down. So I position it somewhere. Oh, let's do it proper. So I draw a line here about 20 millimeters. The X on the keyboard. And then I have a line to start from. And also another helping line. I just draw one here. It doesn't matter how long it is. Which is perpendicular to this one. You see it with this little T, 90 degrees. Because my circle, my arc that I will start now, I want this to be perfect then. And so I'm starting here at this point draw an arc something like that okay 
and you see when I scroll down uh, here I get a little symbol and this is actually the tension constraint you also see it here that I have a perfect transition and I want that so be sure it is snapping here and you got this uh, tension symbol here and then let's mirror this so I select the object then the mirror line hit the word select and then I select my mirror line and then I get my mirrored form here and then I will create an offset got this here or here on the modify offset and I will offset these two curves here and yeah let's do seven millimeters looks fine I think then I take another three-point arc and do a connection from here to here and you see it uh, it also snaps here somewhere in the middle when I get um, two dotted lines here and this is the point where I set my end point so click one two and then here at the center point and then I'm actually already happy with it if you want to move maybe this is a little bit too high so when you used measurements then you can easily change that when I put it in 30 then in here then I can move everything so when you use here connections of measurements then you have the advantage of easily move it or change it of course or maybe when I want this 45 that's quite helpful so finish the sketch and uh, the first thing we do, we will extrude the base plane here. So go on, mm. create extrude, and be sure you select all the parts here. Okay, not just the ring. So everything should be blue. And we pull this up about let's take 50 because we will cut away a little bit of it hit OK and then I will immediately create another sketch here on the side plane and there I just draw a line cutting through so somewhere something like that okay decide how how diagonal do you want to have it and finish the sketch and now what you can do is actually split the body we could also uh, draw a rectangle and cut it away with an extrude so there are different possibilities so split body you also find it here then click on the cylinder that we have and then activate here splitting tool and select the line hit OK now we have here two separate bodies and be sure that you select here the top one and go to remove so now we have our cut cylinder and we give it immediately uh, not a fillet we take a chamfer here on this border and let's try here maybe five not too bad okay 
and then I just switch on my first sketch again because I need it for the part where the handle is mounted so I create another extrude try to maybe you hide the body then I select here the outer ring not the inner one just the other one I activate here my body again and let's raise it here about 60 or something and be sure that the operation is set to join here see that maybe I take a little no let's leave it here 60 I think that's not too bad then hit OK and I hide here the body again because I do actually we could use here an emboss also for creating this type but also let's try to do just an extrude so when you select the smile line here activate the body again and here the starting is not the profile plane we will start from an object so we will start here creating from this one and so this is actually doesn't matter when you join it but this would be an option so it goes straight up here I cancel this because I will I want to try the emboss tool here so emboss then I have to hide the body select the smile I think I have to go to emboss again so activate here the emboss tool now my sketch profile is already selected then I select the face where I want it to have it. This is this one. And now you see the difference maybe between the um, thing going straight up with the extrude. And here the emboss is using the, the shape of the given face. And now we have a 90 degree circle. Um, 90 degree emboss here so what we also could do is to deboss it of course we need an emboss here so this is actually the I think more nice way to do this in this case that we use an emboss instead of extrusion and I will use it here I think three This looks fine, I think. And yeah, hit OK. See that? Not too bad. And of course, we will do a little bit of filleting. So just tiny little fillets here, here, and also here and here and also here so just that I get a little bit of more realistic connection so maybe even lower yeah you can decide which you want to to have so the base plane actually is finished wasn't too difficult I think and I will create now a new component actually I should have done this also for the, the body here so new component this is the parent component that's fine I name this shade because the lampshade we will do as next step okay then we get a new component here 
and be sure that here the it's activate with this little dot and maybe you save your scene also so I put it here into my tutorial projects lamp save and then I just hide this body here and when we have a look at the canvas see that it's actually we will create a revolve form and we will cut away again a thing of it that's what we do so hide it again and then I will create a sketch on the side plane then I start with the middle line from the origin and I make it 170 millimeters then another line here down we will take here 60 millimeters and also just a, a little guidance also here at the top where I want 25 millimeters to go in but I will hit here X because this will just be a construction line and helping us to create our form because here I'd like to do a three-point arc again starting from that point and when I hover over my distance helping line I could go down here and I just put it somewhere there the next point and you see when I snap it I get here my little tension symbol again please be aware that you also get this because here I want a little bow and the rest of the lamp I will create a fit point spline and always remember use as less points as possible so I start here and just one here in the middle and the, th the third one I will connect here to the end then get my check mark here hit escape and then I can click here on this point and you can form the lamp however you like it okay so more or less whatever you want to have I take something like that and what you could also do to do it a little bit better here at the top please add a little fillet at this position so just take five here now I have my radius here and I also do again I use a line with cutting a part away I will also do this here in that moment and I start somewhere here and going across yeah something like that you could also take here of course a measurement when you want to have it uh, exactly a special degree but it depends of course where you started so I could use that here be sure that it's long enough when we rewolve it that it's going here through the whole thing and yeah, move it a little bit more so that I don't cut away too much here and finish the sketch then be sure that nothing is selected then let's do a um, rewolf and select a profile one two okay so take two parts or the both parts then select the axis this is here our line that we have in the middle and be sure angle 360 degrees yeah yes then your body hit okay 
Then before we cut away the part down here, we will create a shell. And so go to the shell tool, select the face down here, and we will take a thickness of, yeah, let's take three millimeters or two, as you like, inside direction, okay. Now we have a nice thickness here, and then I activate my sketch again and do my split body. Remember, I need here, split body again, then select the body, select the splitting tool. That's where we at, and hit OK. And then I will remove here again the part I don't need. Hit remove. Now I have a nice little lampshade, but we have to do even more because we have little cutouts here at the top. And for that we will create a new sketch here on the bottom plane. And we will use here the ellipse tool. And I will start here. Uh, be sure that, or actually what you can take here, is it's snapping here somewhere to a mid point, I don't know. So start somewhere at this line in the middle between these two. Okay, and I take here this middle point because the triangle is showing me I'm in the middle of somewhere. So I take the first one, then I take here, yeah, something about, let's take eight, click and the third click now will define the thickness and I will take three millimeters and but I have the feeling this is quite mm, let's take 10 here so double click on it and add it to 10 or even 12 yeah I want this cut out and actually that's enough because we don't need more at this point. We could also have done the sketch here on top, actually it doesn't matter. So finish the sketch. Then let's do an extrude. Be sure you select both parts left and right from this one. Then the starting point is not the profile plane down here. We will uh, select the starting point in a second so check this change this to object and then fusion is asking me to select an object and i'm selecting the inner top face here and this is where to start from and we will use a distance here of three millimeters because we don't need more and so it is cutting through our plane here when you set the operation to cut. Okay, please be aware that here is cut turned on and then hit OK and then we have a little nice cutout here. We will do a little fillet before we use a rectangle, a uh, cylindrical pattern, a cir circular pattern. So I take here just the outer one and give it small little radius always use radiuses because they look more realistic so 0 0.2 is actually enough here and then go to create pattern circular pattern change the type from faces to features and then select the two of the features the one is the extrude and the second one is the fillet so one, two, select them. Now they are active here and then I change here to selecting the axis. This is here our middle axis. And you see what we've got here. 
in the image there were actually four holes but I like five more so I take it here to four and compute option adjust and hit OK and so we got five nice little cutouts here in our lamp and last but not least we will add also the thing where the handle is mounted so actually we used here remember 20 25 and um, 15 here for the shape and we will use it again here so we will create another sketch and this time i want this handle on this side so i use here this plane and i'm drawing a helping line again so switch off here sketches that i don't need the helping help, helping line and i think i will make it here 140 millimeters press x for being just the construction line then I create a circle starting from this point and we take 25 again and also another circle starting here with 15 okay so we do more or less the same actually if you don't like to have it that thick uh, then change here a 25 maybe to 20 or something so it doesn't have to be the exact same thickness here at the top then do um, finish the sketch and go back to extrude select both sides of the outer ring then change here again the starting point is not profile plane it is the object then I'm selecting here the outer face and give it a distance here of 2 maybe I have to start here minus 2 yeah minus 2 and we will the operation set to join so now we get also this nice uh, little shaped form in the form of the lamp that is the big advantage of not just extruding and uh, just putting it through so when you extrude from an, a face we will use the shape and actually we will do a little bit more maybe five millimeters or something yeah operation set to join yes and okay and then of course i will do some filleting again do it on both sides mm, let's take maybe even no too much yeah one one is fine so one millimeter here and my lampshade is more or less finished of course I can cut a hole also inside it and well let's do this quickly so get where's my sketch this one get the sketch back create an extrude select here the inner circle and I just pull this out set the operation to cut and hit OK so now we have a hole in here good um, don't worry about the messed up 
seen here because we will do later with assembly and jointing we will put everything together but for the handle stuff we will create a new component now so go to assemble new component I name this handle parent should be actually here lamp one and not the shade okay so I have this at the same hierarchy and for the handle I'll create so I switch off here the shade for a second and for the handle so be sure that this is active <coughs> create a sketch and we will create one on the side plane here then the first thing we will create is actually a line and we don't start here somewhere at this connection point start somewhere here at the round floor the reason why is because we will assemble everything together later on and we will add a little bit of rotation and that's the reason why we just put it next to it and build it together then later so somewhere at the floor uh, straight up around 40 millimeters or something and then we will create a fit point spline and be sure that 3d sketched is checked okay this is important because we will do this little twisted form and for that we will move later on points into 3d dimension instead of just 2d we will start 2d of course so i start here at this point and the first point i draw is actually just straight up and then i'm starting here to build somehow a curve actually i don't need more than six points and then i finish here the curve and i will go to escape and then i adjust the points a little bit and of course here at the bottom i want a straight smooth transition and for that i will just click at this point and i can handle the tension of course but to be perfectly straight and to be um, actually tensioned i will use here the horizontal and vertical constraint so click on the tension so that the tangent is selected not the point the tangent and go to horizontal vertical and now it's perfectly straight up and you get a nice curve then so hit escape to get out of the tool and i will just add it here a little bit more my curve and make sure that this last point or the angle of this tangent of the last point is something like that because we will add here later on the shade and when the tangent is in this direction then the shade will uh, look straight down so be sure that it is around 45 degrees or something in the angle okay so i have a nice curve now in 2d and now i switch here my view to 3d and what i will do is i will move the points here to the right side and you can do this by hitting the m key m on the keyboard so i get into my move tool and the move tool allows me to move the points now in 3d if you have the 3d sketch on so i just click on the points here and move it a little bit this direction so i'm leaving it here going up straight and then moving i take now i take two of them no i just can do it separate no i can take two of them so that the curve starts here and then makes this little bend so Doing something like that and 
I could also, when you want to move the tangent, then be sure that you click on the tangent um, and then you could also move it here in this direction to change the tangent in another direction. So you can even change the point or the tangent with this move tool. So this was a little bit too much, so just tune that you are happy. Don't overdo it. Just give it this nice little twist here. And when you're happy, then finish the sketch. And now, super easy, go to create pipe, select the path, and be sure that section size is set to 12 or 13 or something, because we have 15 of diameter here, but I find 12 is quite okay. If you want it thicker or thinner, it's also fine, it should fit in here. Okay, I'm quite happy with it. Of course, you can uh, be sure that operation set to new body. And when you're not happy with the curve, then just go it, go into it again, edit sketch, and you can tune your curve, of course. Then we will assemble all the stuff together. But before, so I have now component 1, 2, and actually I forgot to create a component here from the base, but I can do it, of course, here now afterwards. So just switch off the shade again. I click here at the body of the base and say create components from bodies. So now a new component is created with my base in it, and I just named the component base. Okay, and I act activate this, so this is now my uh, point where to start bu building everything together. And before we create joints, we have to create one origin or one grounding, um, is this called, so that one thing is fixed. Okay, and for that, click here on the base component, right click, and say ground. Nothing happens actually instead of this little pin here. So this is the symbol I am the ground object. And then now we're starting to create joints. And for that switch here to assemble joint. The first thing you search on your screen because standard thing is rigid I think and you have to change the symbol here to revolute because we want to rotate it and uh, it also is a fixed um, yeah it it, um, it changes also the selection mode so important revolute then the first joint we set uh, the first joint position is down here and you can't select it now because I switched here, so you have to click here on the selection, um, snap selection, then you can select here stuff. Be sure that all your sketches are switched off so that you avoid um, mistaken points here. So take here the point that pops up here in the middle and click on it. So now our first component their first joint position is fixed. Then, have a look here inside. Now you have to be careful which one you take. Of course, it would be um, uh, simple to take here the face and this point which is uh, provided, but this will fix our handle in this direction. And we don't want this so be careful that you select here this 
inner side of the cylinder and not the bottom plane okay the inner side and then press command on the keyboard and then you can select here between actually one two three points and I select the lowest of these one okay select and immediately our thing goes round here and fits together and it's straight if you would take here the face in the middle then it would be something like that so be careful then I'm happy with that hit OK so I don't need an angle or something so leave everything to zero okay and then maybe you'll see if you've seen I switch on my shade again and then I'll create a second joint again assemble joint now our first part is be sure revolute is set here and select is on and then again you select hover over this inner cylinder ring press command on the keyboard and I select here now here it doesn't matter actually um, I take here the middle one and click on it okay first joint is positioned and the second position is here and that was the reason why I asked you to put it here in 45 degrees because now when we take here this face at the uh, center point click on it it depends on how your shade is fixed and you see it's in the wrong direction but quite easy when this happens also to you then flip it and maybe you have to change here the starting angle and I take here 180 degrees so it de depends completely on maybe your settings or on which direction you created so be aware you may need flip you may, may need 180 degrees and yeah that's it actually so we connect connected everything and it looks quite fine I think if you're not happy with your curve movement you can change it afterwards and maybe fusion can calculate everything correctly so that it uh, um, keeps the placement and everything's fine so I hit OK here and now I can edit my joints and animate them a little bit so we get here a new component uh, a new category and there we have our joints here and with these arrows here you can edit the joints so when I click on it I can set for example a minimum or maximum of rotation for example when I want to have here a min max of 45 minus 45 and I do an animation you see I can restrict the, the limit or the joints I hit OK but when I do this uh, on this joint because this is actually a um, parent of it so I can't could I do no uh, and when I set here a min max you see it's not going with it so I cancel it but what I can do for example is to motion link these together so when I set a motion link go here assemble motion, motion link and I select here this joint and that joint then they are both linked together and when the one is moving also the other one is moving so this is one nice option that you could try and play around with it a little bit so just quick and easy you can set here different movements so I just leave that to 
So I have a little fun animation. Okay, that is just a um, basic jump in in jointing and motion linking. So just that you see what is possible, whereas you can do a lot more stuff with it. But I'm happy now with this connection. And I think we will also create the light bulb because we want to do a little rendering and for that we need something that is glowing. Of course we won't build the whole inside but I think we can do this quite fast. So I just collapse here everything and create a new component. I name this light bulb. Hit OK. Oh, and I now did a mistake I always do is I forgot to set the right parent for this component because now the base is parent. Uh, but I can change this by just clicking it and let drop over here lamp. And now it's in the same hierarchy as all the other stuff. So be sure that light bulb is your active component. Actually, I could turn off all the other stuff. And then I insert a canvas, insert from my computer, and here I have my light bulb. So I scale it a little bit. And I calibrate it. So And from here to here, we have a dimension of 85 millimeters. And I edit my canvas so that I have my starting point here and it is more or less in the middle. Hit OK. Then create a sketch here on the side plane. Of course, we will need a middle line, 85. Then we will just do a quick fit point spline, starting from here, here. Remember, use as less points as possible. I will adjust the curve here in a second. So, and connect here, then hit OK. I hit Escape and now I can edit the stuff a little bit. And what you should do here, for example, here at this point, um, the last point, I will do a horizontal vertical constraint. The reason why is because now when we revolve it, then we have a tangent transition. I also do this here with this one. Then it's, it has to be completely flat and then we have a good transition here. So hit escape here, it's not too bad, not too bad, not too bad. Maybe here I added the tangent a little bit so that it's more straight. So I have to go a little bit further because I will cut this out later. So something like that. Yeah, I'll leave it. It's just a rough forming and finish the sketch. Then do a revolve. My axis is of course here my center axis. And 
we got our nice little form here. Hit OK. I go inside the sketch again because I will split the body here so that I have a separate one. So edit the sketch and I'm just getting here a line, a horizontal one, just right through it somewhere here. Hit OK. Finish the sketch. So switch here the canvas off and what I do is I just split the body. So body to split this one and select the splitting tool, that one, OK. And a very easy cutout we will create here with a coil. So starting the coil, I select the ground plane, then select here the center. I just put somewhere here 23 and then see the coil is popping up. And of course we have to adjust a little bit. So let's see. I will decrease here the section size. I will use more revolutions in the height maybe we just set to 20 get my canvas back so that I see it a little bit better the diameter I have to change to make it smaller maybe we need two millimeters It depends on how big you did your sketch. So be sure that diameter is something like that, that it's cutting half of, of your lamp. And maybe we even need more revolutions. I think I think seven could be fine. And I do actually not uh, a cut right away. I create a new body because here I don't want this to end somewhere right in there. I want to fade it out a little bit and so I'm happy with these settings and hit OK. And what I do now is a press pull. I select this face and pull it out. And let's modify. I don't want it to be actually Let's see if I could do, yeah, no. I want to do it more or less straight. But it uses the direction of the curve. So here it is getting, can I get out there? No. Uh, and then we will create actually an extrude of this face. So select it and extrude it. Be aware now, okay? Be careful. I have to I switch off here the body that it is not joined with this because I want join operation, but not with the body, just with the given cylinder, uh, the given coil here. 
So that's the reason why I switch it off. So now I have my get my bodies back and now I'm doing the cutting operation. So go here to combine, then I select the target body, then the tool body and set my operation to cut. The reason why now I have this fade out more or less and not a straight end and hit OK. So I have a quick coil here and we will do also of course a fillet. Everything else would be ugly. So I hope it works. I'm not sure if it could calculate the fillet here in a good way. Let's try how far we can manage it. No, this was too much. 0 0.4 works here for me. So I take this, hit OK, and now we have a quick, quick and dirty <laughs> light bulb. But, and I will also do a little fillet here that we have the feeling it there is some kind of combination or there are separate parts. So fillet just a tiny little one. And also on uh, no, not press port, cancel. Also a little fillet. And this one. Yeah, let's take 0 0.4. So now we have this kind of connected look. And what I also do is then for the rendering that I will need another sketch. I actually edit the sketch. There it is, there it is. And I draw another line there where we have a different shading. So just draw a line from here to here. Finish the sketch. <coughs> And then a split face, you find it here, be aware, don't split body now, split just the face, so it stays one body. So, faces to split, this one, splitting tool, the line, and hit OK. Switch here to my view where I can see that. The reason why, because I can give this then another color than this one. Good, light bulb finished. Then let's combine it with our lamp. So get everything here back and let's see if it fits inside our lamp. Let's try also a joint here. No, actually I will leave, I will do a copy because I want one here to stay for the rendering on the floor that we see it and to put one really inside. So I just take the two of them, copy and paste. So I hide this one, I will render that later and maybe I have to pull it out this component otherwise it will move also with it. So I create a new component out of these two bodies. Mm, I have to. So create component from bodies. Okay, now I have it uh, separate, but I don't mind. So, 
and they should be here in this yeah so now I'm hiding that and go to assemble joint be sure that revol a uh, revolute is on then we're selecting here let's check if we could yeah I could get here this point so our first component and then let's see if we could go here inside somewhere yeah it works so when I hover over let's check that it when I hover over this one then I press command and then I can select here the center point and my light bulb is coming right into position but I have to flip it and it's positioned easy as that and hit OK so get back all my stuff and my light bulb on the floor I will just did I move that to this one yes so I can delete that component yes delete And I can move it here and just rotate it for rendering purposes. Good, and let's switch to the render view. I won't go too much into detail. I just show you how you can make your bulb be lightened. So to cut a long story short, I prepared here already the render setup. What I did is here in the render setup, remember um, have a look at my render setup and materials tutorials if you want to get a little bit more into detail. Um, I used here the cool light render setup. I did a little bit of rotation of the light. You can choose any studio, whatever you'd like to have here. Uh, change the color maybe a little bit more dark gray. That's actually in the studio setup and in the appearance tab I added here some powder coat gray and um, added it white and also here I this was in the category paint powder coat smooth so I just downloaded here uh, one of them and I just changed the color from green or whatever you'd like to have here Pink is also quite nice. So, um, so these are the colors for that, and now I will get into detail for the glass or for the light bulb. And for that, I'm just scrolling down here, close paint, go to metal, and I take actually um, aluminium set tint for this back part of the light bulb here then close here my metal again go into gloss and go here in the smooth category and we got here a gloss clear and before I add this I switch here to apply to just two faces this was the reason why I did this split face before so that I can add here another material than here. So now I have 
could apply to the faces so I just click and drag and let drop here and in the textured area I took here a glass frosted light so I put here so and let's see I'm not sure if we could see it properly here in the preview actually uh, we don't have a material thickness because it's a solid body so it won't render perfectly so because this was just a quick and dirty light bulb so when we want to do it correctly then you should actually uh, create this as shell I could actually try this and see if the render looks a little bit different so I just pause it and I go switch back a second back to design and I will use here this is my body and when I shell this so I can shell the whole thing and I take here one millimeter of inside thickness of the glass now you see I got here thickness I won't see through that that's the reason why we use frosted glass hit ok switch back into my rendering and now we see maybe a little bit more realistic look of our light bulb here because we have yeah you see it here in the refraction at the corners that it looks more uh, and better as a glass. So it's not finished the rendering but um, you see actually what will come up so that is the first thing that I wanted to show you and the second thing we will create an emissive light bulb in here so switch back here my appearance stop my rendering here for a second and you find switch off the glass and um, miscellaneous and there is a category emissive and there you find different kind of light bulbs or leds that you can use and i use actually i'm trying here the led and Put it uh, let me think if I yeah switch back to bodies components that it's assigned to the whole body here and now in the rendering you should see a, yeah a light you see the light quite well and so maybe a little bit too much so you just double click and you can decrease here the luminance a little bit maybe when I go to 10,000 luminance okay maybe it's a little bit too less but you can play around it depends on which studio do you take how you add here your light emission And what you could also do is, for example, here on the inner side, I just switch back to metal again, and aluminium polished. And when I switch back to faces here, you can make here the inner side reflective. So I hope I got it. Yeah. Now you see it's reflecting a little bit more. I'm not sure if this takes a big difference here on the light which is coming here to the floor, but just to add a little bit more detail here in your rendering, you can use this. So I want to have this now as a rendered image. So maybe I do a smaller one here, not too big, and let this render. So this is my rendered image. 
not sure which one I like more. So that was the tutorial of the lamp. I hope you got now the basic stuff that you might need to create easy things in Fusion and to do easy assemblings and easy animations. So yeah, then I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.